chefs and confectioners appreciate that presentation is the ingredient that makes a dish taste that much better. Photographer Salia Bamji approaches every image as if it's a portrait, capturing the nuances and character of her subjects. It's said that a picture is worth a thousand words, but a word can also create an entire picture. I'm curious to find out how writers and visual artists feel about the impact of their media. And quite specifically, I'm looking forward to hearing Salia Idris Bamji's thoughts. Salia was busy with a tea party shoot when Zaki arrived, which gave us an opportunity to watch her in action. She works quickly yet meticulously, with an eye for even the tiniest detail, combining technical expertise with creative flair. Salia, this is amazing! Hi Zakia, how are you? Good, good to see you. You as well. <laughs> so you are a writer, a blogger and a visual artist. How did this all come about? I've always been a visual thinker and I've always been interested in telling stories. I studied marketing communication because I wanted to be a copywriter and tell the story of brands. But then I decided I wanted to tell people's stories and that's when I got into journalism. Uh, and it was in my journalism honours year that I actually had an interest in photography. And what type of photography do you do? Currently I'm quite a versatile photographer. I do event photography, kids birthday parties, anniversary dinners. One of my passions is food photography and I love helping small businesses get started, especially home industries. It's really satisfying and brings me great joy knowing that an image I've taken goes a long way in promoting someone's business. Did you study photography formally? No I haven't. I've actually learned a lot just by practice and watching YouTube tutorials. For you, what is the essence of a good photograph? For me, a good photograph tells a story, even if it's something as simple as a, a cupcake, you know. Um, for me, I want someone to look at a photo I've taken and, and feel something, uh, whether it's the, the, the story of how beautiful the object is, or whether it's a kind of mood I've managed to capture in the image, or, or a precious memory that's been captured. And what is the difference between your commercial work and your artistic work? I like to think that the both of them intersect in that, that I bring a bit of art into the commercial stuff. Um, but if I had to look at them separately, I'd say that the um, arty stuff is a lot more avant-garde, maybe a little stranger or weirder. Um, it's the kind of stuff that I'd like to print out and have hanging on the walls of my house. I have to know because I'm absolutely terrible at taking photographs. What do you look for in the setup of a photograph? I always look at the story that I want to tell. Like for this one in particular, we're focusing on the cupcakes. It's a small business. This woman does this really amazing biscuits and fondant cupcakes. Uh, so we wanted to set up like a full scene so that we could get a few nice wide angle shots and then we could get a few close ups of the cupcakes themselves. And we have a beautiful little model. Just pretend the dolly's your friend, right? Play with the dolly. Just play like you normally play, yes. It's just the light from the sun coming in, but there's a lot of shadows in the front. So to balance that, you can use a flash. But in this one, the flash was just a bit too far up, so we'll dial it down on the next take. Yes? Is it a tasty cupcake? Ah. Oh. oh, that's much better. What next? I'm going to show you how to take standalone product shots, and then we're going to do a bit of editing. Awesome. Yeah, let's go. Okay, Salia, tell me about exposure, underexposure, overexposure. Exposure is the amount of light that you're allowing in your photograph. Sometimes I like to overexpose so that when I come back to post-processing, there's a lot more I can do with the photograph. When I underexpose, what happens is when I come to post-processing and I try to lift up the exposure, I get a lot of degradation in the quality. Back in the day, photos were processed and printed in a dark room with lots of smelly chemicals, but now you can modify photos with a click of a mouse. Shall we? Yeah, let's go. Editing. Like darkrooms in the old days, the digital processes are, are exactly the same. Um, you're still going to lighten, you're going to still darken, raise exposure or reduce it. Um, I don't like to do a lot of super processing on my images. I like to keep them true to camera, but I will change things like um, the amount of light in the picture or even the temperature of the light. With this one, we've got Tahani like, looking at her cupcake. It's a very pretty image. And one of the first things I like to do is crop. But I don't mind sort of like cropping the top of someone's head as long as their face is in focus. I always like to introduce a bit of contrast because that always makes an image pop. You can see already it looks yeah. a lot better. 
I didn't think the photo needed editing before, but it looks amazing now. It's a huge difference, it's gorgeous. Salia, do you do a lot of photoshopping? The only times I use Photoshop is if there's like a really distracting element in the image. Like say there's a, a stain on a tablecloth that I can't get rid of using an, uh, my regular post-processing program, then I would go into Photoshop and, and try to fix up those flaws. But like I wouldn't remove scars on people and things like that because I feel that makes them who they are. Salia describes herself as a visual raconteur who documents the everyday, but her images are anything but run of the mill. While people and food are her specialist fields, she's quick to spot the poetry that lies hidden in the prosaic and to capture this in an image or the written word. What do you look for when you're working on location? I look for interesting backgrounds, nice natural textures and good light. I know that you're also a writer and a poet. What are you working on at the moment? I'm working on putting together a collection of my poems written over the last few years. Uh, it includes work that I did during my MA in creative writing and I'm also working on a full-length novel. Oh, this is a stunning backdrop. Zakia, will you please be my model? <laughs> A little bit short, but okay. No. Let's do a bit of high contrasting okay. things. So I want the sun on your face okay. right there. Um, and I like the way that your lip is going to pop against <laughs> the green. Lady Danger. Let's see this one. Oh, that's stunning. Oh, I love this. And let me come in a bit closer for a bit of a wacky shot. Yeah, stunning. <laughs> Can I have a look? Oh, that's actually quite oh, cool. Oh, these are ridiculous. Uh, yeah. So what have been some of your career highlights to date? In terms of my writing, a short story I wrote won a prize in Uganda in 2014. It was an Africa-wide competition and I sent in a story and it got selected. Thank you so much for sharing your time and talent with us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Let's take a break. Uh, okay.